All right. Hey, everybody. This is Jared DePolitano, um, better known in the community as JNAP. Um, and this is going to be a How to Play on Jemp uh, 2021 edition stream. Um, this is something that I've been meaning to get around to for a while. Um, I think it's something that will benefit the community a lot um, in, in conjunction with the uh, pretty uh, detailed forum post that I made last year. And, and ultimately, the goal is just to teach players, especially returning players or new players, um, how to use <laughs> Jemp, um, which is play.starwarsccg.org, kind of from like a base level. Um, since you know a lot of folks might find some aspects of it you know, not super intuitive and uh, and could use some help so this will hopefully accompany the more detailed document and you know together hopefully they can you know get more people comfortable using the interface playing the game because it's a great 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 game and uh, it's really in a good spot right now with the community uh, lots of people coming back lots of people playing um, even unfortunately during this pandemic people you know, while we haven't been able to play live games, um, we have been able to play on Jemp and, and keep keep things rolling. So um, I'll, I'll go now. We're going to start this from scratch, so I'll try to <laughs> catch myself and, and not use you know, too many acronyms or, or terms that might, um, you know, confuse because I'm going to be kind of trying to put myself in the place of somebody who's coming back to the game or just starting the game. All right, so hopefully everyone can see the screen here. This is jump and like I said we'll do it just from scratch so like pretend you saw on you know Twitter or Facebook or wherever you know play.starwarsccg.org so play.starwars comes up here and so it brings you to this home screen um, so we're just gonna make up a quick account it's pretty easy um, the one thing to know is that you uh, can't exceed 10 characters in your title so we're just gonna do a a new uh, account um, and make up a password. The video tutorial here um, is probably pretty old, so that's <laughs> the main reason why I want to do this because um, I don't think there's one that's been current and there's a lot of new stuff that's happened. Oh, so I hit login. That's the problem. Let's do register. Okay, good. All right, so we'll register here. Sorry about that. So we're working from a you know a total base new account. So like we just joined Jump. Okay, cool. We're in the lobby. So again, I just want to remind everyone. So this comes with these are our introductory packs. Um, it accompanies this Jump operational guide in the top left, and I recommend having this. You know, either read it ahead of time, read it concurrently, have it handy. Um, it, it really has a lot more detail than I'm hoping to get into here. I want to try to keep this a little high level and not make this too long. But this is a forum post I made last June. I've updated it a few times. This is, you know, everything you should really need. And I, I went through a lot of detail, got some good feedback on this, edited it. Um, but at, you know, maybe at your leisure, and like I said, a lot of it, if you just read it from scratch, it might seem like Greek, but as you start playing on Jump and using this and accompanying with this video, Hopefully, uh, it, it you know results in a good uh, outcome for, for new folks. So that's the operational guide. That's my first suggestion is to know where that is. So we have the interface here. You know, it's not too flashy. Um, we have the lobby um, and different items across the top here. You have the merchant, which is discussed in the guide. A bunch of different links, different relevant form items. I don't think we're going to get too far into that. I think my goal today is let's sign up, let's build a deck, and maybe even play a game. Um, and I'm going to do that from Premiere to Death Star 2 format, um, just so it doesn't get too complicated with shields. And again, my, my hunch is that a lot of people that are going to use this video the most are people that you know, may have you know, played this game 15, 20, 25 years ago and are now like, wow, I didn't realize you could even play this online. This is really cool. Um, so I, I don't want to get too complicated with the you know, more main or open style mechanics that are going on nowadays. So... Um, all right, so we have our stuff, we have the lobby, we have the chat. Um, the biggest thing is we're going to build a deck. So we have the deck builder here, which unfortunately doesn't really have like big flashing lights on it. It's kind of subtle here in the middle left. But this is what um, you're going to want to use to build a deck. All right, so this opens, so we have a new deck. Um, you know, the first thing I would do is probably save it. So you can just keep saving it on an occasion. So what's a, what's a common card that we're definitely going to use? Let's do a dark side deck first. We'll do prepared defenses. That's going to be our starting effect. So I'll just do save. I'll just call this um, 
we're going to do Hunt Down because I'm most familiar with Hunt Down and I think the deck is not too complicated to build. So we'll do Hunt Down Premier to Death Star 2, Premier to Death Star 2 format, so it'll include all those sets. All right, so we have the deck. Um, something to note here, you if you open this up, so this is all your decks, and then here you have sample decks, so you could play these different canned things. You know, they're not super powerful or super refined. Some of these, you know, they were good at the time, 96 World Champion deck. So if you just want to start and get more comfortable with the interface and don't want to even go into the deck building aspect, I'd recommend using these, maybe get a buddy or even set up another account for yourself. You can play against yourself on two different, you know, web browsers just to get comfortable with, with the format or with the functionality and go from there. But we'll do this because, you know, I assume there's lots of, you know, players who are familiar with Hunt Down, played Hunt Down, and I think we're going to do profit on the light side side. Um, all right, so now you just you have the deck builder over here on the right, um, or all the different filters. So there's a bunch of different options. Again, a lot of these are described in the guide, so I don't want to go exactly one by one by one, um, especially because I think a lot of this is actually intuitive of you know find a card, search for a card, search if it has certain game decks, and whatnot. So we'll do hunt down. So what I do a lot is I just take the first board or two, um, and then I just click. So we have hunt down. Um, another thing I usually do when I'm building decks is when I'm building a dark side deck, I can filter for dark, um, so I don't have any light side deck or light side cards that pop up. And we have hunt down. We know what hunt down entails. So we got to deploy the hollow theater, visage, may deploy meditation chamber, which we're definitely going to want to do. We won't do a dueling one here. That's a little more, frankly, out of my comfort zone. You ever see Doctor Torch? She likes to play hunt down dueling a lot. A uh, really good player back from um, the decipher era. And we have our necessary cards. Another cool thing here, again, um, you know, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. I don't want to make this overly structured or overly detailed, but again, something to just make this a little easier. Um, you can sort by format, so we can make it Premier Death Star 2. Um, so we don't have, you know, stuff that came after, cards that came after that, you know, clouding the deck builder. So that our, our deck is legal in Premier Death Star 2 format when all is said and done. All right, so we have this now. What do we do when we build Hunt Down? We put Vaders in. My usual rule is four or five Vaders. And I usually like a diversity of them, to be honest. So we'll do you know, one OG, maybe two Dark Lord of the Sith. We'll do a Lord Vader or two. So we got five. Because the key, obviously, to Hunt Down is hey, get Vader to Battleground, flip, apply pressure, you know, make sure you're not losing a Visage too often, and go from there. Um, we want Vader to have his lightsabers. So Vaders, we'll do two here. We need some locations, we need some starting effects. So a lot of this stuff, you know, you, you probably do need some type of surface or familiarity with different cards. I mean, a lot of times nowadays you'll you say, hey, I need some deck lists. Let me have some base deck lists to work off there and then build up, tweak, play, play games, modify, you know, keep going to and from that well. Um, but, you know, if you're just building from scratch, you probably don't want to need some surface knowledge of what cards are relevant for what decks. So I know that back in this era, you always wanted a Premier Rust Order because it was a way of pulling your battlegrounds and pulling your locations to get activation. So I know I want the Executor Docking Bay for some activation. You can even do stuff like I know Docking Bay 327, we want that. Maybe we want Endor, so Lord Vader is a little cheaper. Um, so I'll do the platform, is what the Docking Bay is. And then you know, mobilization points is good because we can pull a system. You can pull a couple 2-1 systems with this, Rendili or Karita. Um, so we're going to do Rendili. Let's throw a flagship executor in here too for our space. And this is kind of how I, you know, will deck build from scratch. And there's a lot of, you build it, and you, what this is mentioned in the guide too. So now we're getting different cards of different types. You can save it, and then you just go to open it again. And when you do that, it sorts it. So okay, I have my characters together, I have my effects together, and uh, and whatnot. So um, we have those. We're gonna need a third effect. I usually like Crush the Rebellion. You know, we want some I have you nows, so we can fight Vader a little bit better. And a Vader Monarch. Oh nope, that's Premier Reflections too, so that won't be in here. Um, so let's see, we want Emperors. He's a good character. Let's get three of him because he's Destiny 6. Let's get a couple of Mars. Let's get Mars Saber. That didn't pop up. Oh, that's not in here. So, oh no, it is. Okay. Because that is Enhanced Java's Battles, which was out by then. So she's a spy, which is pretty neat. We want a Force Lightning for the Emperor. I want a Force Field so we can protect him. 
Um, you know, I'm trying to think of some other starting effects. You know, sometimes the press enforcement is good. This is an error that had a lot of annoying um, interrupts. So here's a grabber. You know, these are things that they come with watching games, playing games. This is where I'll suggest a lot. You know, just watch games of the format. When you go in the lobby, which you can just check here, you can see there's seven games going on. You know, you have some that are open, you have some that are Premier and you hope. Um, some are just casual open, but sometimes you'll see Premier Death Star 2 if that's what you're interested in. You know, watch the game. If you can watch it, you're allowed to watch it. So that's what I would encourage a lot um, of people to do, to, to just kind of see what people are playing in decks, kind of how things are going. Um, so we'll have two grabbers, so any pesky light side interrupts. I don't cause any problems. What are other some good dark side characters? We got Janice, probably one Sim. Um, uh, let's see, we probably want a sniper to get rid of any. You know, not sniper, because there wasn't as many undercover spies here. Um, let's see, we probably want another space guy, another uh, starship. Let's do Chimera. Let's do Thrawn. I know Thrawn's not going to be here yet. Um, you know, some characters I used to always like because they're cheap to deploy, good forfeit ratio. He's going to be forfeit seven. Lieutenant Cabell will be forfeit six. Maybe get Ozzel. Maybe we'll do an Imperial Command. Maybe I'll just do three for now. We're probably not going to use all three because there's not as many admirals and generals back then. Yeah, let's get Cheer now. Um, then let's get Piet. And we probably want. Maybe Battle Deployment. Probably not the best card, but we can do that. Um, those are two. I mean, a lot of big blue cards. Um, Tempest Roll. The Destiny's probably going to be pretty bad, but we can always tweak that stuff. Um, so let's see. Anything else we want to deal with mains? If we want to deal with mains, like maybe a Weapon Levitation. It's probably good to steal like Luke Saber, Obi-Wan Saber. Um, what are other staple cards? You definitely need a masterful move. You probably want a Gick. Pretty much staple in every deck. Probably a Monarch. Keep the opponent's hand low. And where you can see down here, we're at 52 cards. We're almost there. Um, so the mobilization points will give us activation plus two of the docking base. So, so the key will be get Vader, get him down, start kicking the activation up because Hollow Theater will give a bonus. And um, ultimately put pressure on the opponent. So. Um, let's see what else. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to think what other characters might be good. Maybe General Veers. I, I hate doing all this because they have really low, really low destiny, which means we're not going to be able to hit a lot of things. So, what are some? Other, and this is a good. Okay, this might be a good point to. Let's say we say, "Alright, my destiny feels pretty low." That I know there's some good cards out there that are higher destiny. So let's do a limited resources. We can do filter by destiny greater than or equal to, let's do five. So this isn't always the best approach, but you kind of like a sanity check of, you know, hey, I think I'm missing some cards that are probably high destiny, good and useful that I can put in here. Um, where, what are some of those? You know, maybe we've got three emperors, we can do two force lightnings, that's not crazy. Especially because that'll, our destiny's bad. Um, maybe if the emperor's out of place, you can make it a little easier for someone to hit with a lightsaber. Um, probably won't Boba Fett. We'll get him in here. Let's do like it. It's worse. You never know what opponent's gonna have. Um, it could be worse, which is really annoying. Uh, this is every card that's eligible in this format that's a Destiny Five or higher. Uh, I think we're getting about. I don't know if there's gonna be many others. Oh, uh, you know what card we definitely need because this format. Um, cannot hide forever in case they're playing numbers. Actually, that's probably one we should start, really. Um, and then I just thought of another card to put in here. So let's do our sword again. So we'll do save, open, sword, we're at 57 cards. We have a couple weapons, a couple vehicles, a couple ships. Um, you know, this is definitely not going to be the best deck, that's for sure, but um, just something that we can use. We have a happy mouse floating. Probably want a second visage in case it gets canceled. If you want to reset the filter, so let's do reset all. Oh, I didn't want to reset all. The advanced filter, that would have been better opportunity to just do reset advanced, which is everything here. Because now we want to do dark and make sure we're in the right format. 
So, and heads up, I mean, I'm not sure exactly how this, you know, series or, or uh, you know, tutorial will go. I, I might make a couple more. I'm not, I don't want to make this like a three-hour thing, so maybe I'll have a couple that are one or two hour or one hour here and there um, to build this up, just again, to help people get more comfortable with the interface. So, just a heads up on kind of what I'm seeing as the plan. Um, we'll do a Twilight Advisor here, because we had a couple effects, and we might want to get one of them that we don't already have. Um, so the system, we have emperors, we got Mars, we got, do we put symbol in? Yeah. Um, you know, this can be pulled. I don't think we want that. That's not the good one. Let's get attack position, makes things cheaper. And then maybe we'll do the spaceport docky value, because then we can put that with Rendilli and maybe pair it up. So let's do that versus, no, eh, no, we'll just keep that. Um, so now we're at 60. All right, so let's just do a couple sanity checks. We have our starting interrupt. Um, we have everything we need for our objective. We have our objective itself. Um, and uh, we have some grabbers that are defensive. And we have a good, good amount of characters. Um, there's definitely a handful of things we're probably missing here that we'll, we'll go into a match and then uh, and then quickly kick ourselves, but we're not looking for the longest, most complicated match here. All right, so we have a light side, or we have a dark side deck. Maybe we'll just do, all right, no, if we're with deck builder, we'll do only a light side deck after this, or maybe even another session. All right, so we have our deck built, we hit save. You know, that's not gonna appear here, so what you have to do a lot is refresh after you come out of deck builder, so now it's here. And then we'll do a premier Death Star 2. So you select the format, you select the deck, and you hit create table. So we're going to hit create casual game. So now we got to wait for someone to join. So this might take a minute, it might take <laughs> 30 minutes, in which case we'll, <laughs> you know, after a few, we'll, we'll shift on to doing something else. Maybe we'll build a light side deck up um, and we'll just keep chucking in back and forth. But as we're waiting for that, um, we'll see you on the rest of the screen here. So again, these links are your friends. There's a lot of good stuff up here. Anytime there's like a new update, which is usually every couple weeks, you know, they'll fix some bugs, they'll add some new cards, they'll, there's about 100 cards left, which you can see here with the missing card list. Um, if there's bugs, this should, I think, direct to the new GitHub, which is a new way to, yeah. So this is a way to report bugs or make new feature requests or you know, anything like that. If something doesn't kind of interact as you plan it to do, you can put it here. Merchant is where you can buy and sell cards. Again, there's a lot more detail on this in the guide. But um, the main thing is, you know, if you play in leagues, um, you'll, you'll get packs for every win you get, how better you do. Then you'll be given these virtual packs. You could open those packs. You can then sell those cards back, or you could put them in your deck. Um, there's generally not a difference between the cards. I mean, your my cards are limited. That We have none right now, except for those ones we got at the introduction. So you can open these. You click on them, and you open. Hey, look, we got the Jedi pack, great. Um, we got the Rebel Leader pack, cool. Um, if we wanted to, we could sell some of these back to the merchant. Right here, if we click on merchant, we can do owned one. So these are all own cards, so we can sell some stuff. Sell for luck. The, the main thing with the merchant is you can get cards that then you can foil up. If you get four of one, a certain card, and you can buy virtual cards too, they're a buck 25 each, or you can buy a, you know rares on commons. Um, once you get four, you can trade in 15 gold and four cards of a copy, four cards, four copies of a card to get a foil copy of that. Then you can put the foil card in your deck and some people like it, some people don't. I really like it. Um, but that's the main thing for, for gold in my cash. So here's your gold here. We got a buck now since we sold back some of our intro cards. Sometimes leagues cost five bucks to join. Um, nowadays in the leagues tab up here, most of them are pretty cheap. Um, there is no premier dust or two. Sometimes there is a competitive one, but for the most part now, so the seals are five. You get five gold every single week. Um, so you accrue that up, but it's automatically as long as you're signing in. Um, here's the game history. We don't have any here yet because we just started this brand new account. Um, but yeah, like these other leagues, for example, like, so you, this is a league that I'm in. It's, yeah, registration is by invite only. Well, that's no. So like, yeah, it used to be like they'll put this really, really high gold cost so you can't just join. Um, but like the open link here is only five silver, for example, so you can just, do we have five silver? We have, I guess we have, uh, you know, plenty of that because we have 200 
two hundred silver right now with, with two gold. That's the that that's a, a recent suggestion too. That's in the guide about the conversion rate or you know how many silvers equal gold that way. Um, so these were cheap. They've been cheap for a while, so you can just join in, play a bunch of games. Um, and they're they usually make it a little more competitive. Again, in the guide, it talks about what the benefits of the league are um, versus just casual games like the one I just posted. Um, it's cool when your game's up, it's, yeah, it's red. When it gets accepted, it'll move down here. Oftentimes, it usually happens. I'm on Safari. On a Mac desktop, it'll open in a new window. Every once in a while, it'll be uh, um, a little... Uh, it won't pop up. That's a good way to kind of miss a game. If you miss a game, it'll be five minutes, and then it'll time out, and then your opponent's awarded if you, if you like walk away and you forget to get a game up. Um, so it'd be really cool if someone could accept our game so then we could go through some of the gameplay. But actually, in the meantime, yeah, let's start building the light side deck. Just in case, again, there's some people out there like me who still like playing Profit and Hunt Down a lot. Um, we can start on that. So we'll do something similar like we did before. And we'll just have to keep checking it back and forth. Um, so we'll do light side and we'll filter it for the Premiere to Death Star 2 format. We'll do Profit. And then I'd like to save it, so we'll call it Profit DF, uh, Premiere to DS Start 2. I like to, you know, you, you GIMP retains all your data, so it's kind of neat if you have a deck, you play it a lot, you kind of see how it does. You can see how it does in casual versus competitive games. Um, nowadays, you can even see in the league history, you know, what your opponent was playing. It tells the archetype, so you can kind of, you know, copy and paste this to the whole grid when you have a lot of games. Paste it into Excel, do a pivot table, and you can tell yourself, oh, hey, I played a Sunk Down vs. Profit 15 times, and I went 8-7. and seven. Like, Stuff like that. Or you can, if you have 100 times, but who do I keep playing? Do I keep playing you know, the same people all the time? Do I keep do I do well versus certain people versus others? There, there's a lot of cool things. So, obviously, well, I know off the top of my head what the things that the objective requires you to put. So we need a Han. You know, unfortunately, this game is, is the unfortunate part is it's really complicated, but it's also the beauty of it a lot. Um, but the thing is, it's not a game that you just sit down and learn in five minutes. So, um, a lot of times people ask, like, oh, how do I learn how to play? And unfortunately, it's not a quick answer. There's a lot of different ways, and it's not a quick process. But there's a lot of people willing to help and teach, and I, I know there's something in the works right now to try to help people from, like, the base, base level of how do I play this game, and especially leveraging Jump now during the lockdown. Um, to actually be able to um, have people, you know, play one another. Um, so we're just checking here. No one has accepted our game yet. Um, so profit. What do we want to play a lot? So obviously we want, you know, a bunch of Master Luke's. We want Ben Kenobi. Let's check with Ben. Um, who else do we need? We want to lay a uh, blast rifle. Is the best one. I usually like having two of each main in profit. We'll do. One of each Chewy, because they have their merits. Um, I like playing a bunch of senses. We'll do two. We gotta play like kind of commission. It's a high destiny, but cyclic. Maybe you get a Vader out of the opponent's lost pile, and that could be really big. Um, we definitely want a Lando. Ooh, maybe we don't have Lando Vibrax anymore. They made a recent change. They used to erroneously include um, the. Jeb's Palace Special Sealed deck, which had like no escape and Umita and Lando with Vibro Axe, but that actually came out after Death Star 2, so they, they <laughs> fixed that recently. So it would be the case. Um, something I always like in this time, maybe play could be worse. Yeah, um, maybe a barrier to help keep Luke. Maybe an old, or uh, to help keep Han safe. Oh, we got a game. Alright, so it just popped open. Let's do a quick save. So we don't lose it, and we we're playing against she Shira Ryu. So we got a game. It you know prompted us to hit OK. It's now basically prompting us to click different things. Orientation. Most of the time when deploying the sites, it doesn't matter. But you know you get if you have a choice, you'll know it. All right. So I have, I have a couple starting interrupts I can pick from, um, and so I'll pick the one. Usually I don't like to talk in the chat until I have all my starting picks. Sometimes you're talking here. And things are popping up and prompting you, and you can um, have some overlap. So we always want to, and you can accidentally click the wrong starting effect, for example, then you, you need a revert. So these are the two starting effects we always do. Um, from what you have learned, we'll probably 
we'll probably do this. So now that we picked ours, we can say, hey, how's it going? Good luck, have fun. And that's like, I say this in the guide too, that's like your basic etiquette. Like, hey, hi, how's it going? GLHF or GL or just HF. Um, all right, so we have our opening hand. You know, anything you can do lights up. So that's what's cool is that it, it asks you what you want to do, but it also limits you to only things you can do. So we're going to use this. We have execute on our hand, but we want to take the system Rendili for our activation. So we'll do that. So we have Vader, which is good, and we're getting 6-4. So this is good. This means we're going to have first turn flip, which is always a good time um, for hop down. And especially because even if we activated all our Battleground docking bays, we have this one here that we can put on Rendili. So you can see things light up. Again, I, I find the gameplay actually pretty intuitive because it's just constantly you hit... You know, when you used to play back in the day, you didn't consider and realize that that's how the game exactly is supposed to work. It's passed on every single action. Like, activating one card is its own action. And that's where it's kind of streamlined here, where you can activate 13, but your opponent has the opportunity to interrupt you if they want and play something. Like, if they don't want you to activate 3 force, so you have 3 force for your... There will be hell to pay. You know, they can do that. They can play an interrupt before you're able to do that. Um, but usually, in real-life events, people just start activating and they're gone. All right, so we... We could deploy during our deploy phase. We're gonna let's deploy the extra docking bay so we get this, and uh, we'll put it here on the right side. Um, all right, so every, anybody that can deploy is here. We're gonna put space for docking bay. The only site you can go, the only location you can go to. If there's something that there's only one option, jump just decides. Like you can't put space for docking bay to take a look. This says it right here. So when I just click deploy, it didn't ask which system do you want to deploy it to. So we're gonna put Vader. Actually, this is actually a really good hand that I got. I even have a Gek in case worst case scenario, and I have a Saber. Um, all right, so I deploy Vader. Automatic action. Again, this is something in real life you have to physically turn your card. Sometimes people forget to flip their objectives, and then they realize it like half a turn later, and it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> and then your opponent might be like, well, you messed up, you know. But with Jump, it says, hey, this this is supposed to happen. This has to happen. This did happen. Um, so, here we have uh, Vader down, he's only activating 5 force, looks like he's going to do some Jedi testing, um, and which probably means in Premier Dust or 2 format it's going to be Luke, but not necessarily, it could be like a Baragwin <laughs> or somebody else, um, but um, I, I don't have as much fear of you know Luke coming down. Plus this has the deploy plus one, again. All this stuff is really neat that it's automatically enforced. So this makes this pilot's deploy plus one here. In real life, you could very easily forget that. Um, your opponent puts a pilot, puts EPP on now for four force. It's like, hey, you gotta put another one. Or, you know, ideally in a perfect world, everyone on both sides acknowledges every aspect of the game and applies all the automatic modifiers that they need to apply, but not always. And that's where I think jump, you know, it's harder to play real life games. Uh, from a skill perspective, there's more you have to keep in your mind. Cards don't light up. But in terms of learning the game, it, there was a ton of rules, uh, modifications, or clarity that came out of when Jump was being programmed. Every time a new card came in, that might have caused a little bit of a, a wait a minute, is that how that's supposed to work all this time? Or what does the glossary say? Or what has our historical rulings and precedents said? You know, all that's baked in here. Um, every so often, you will find a bug. There, but 9 out of 10, now I'd say even like 90, seven out of a hundred times people think, hey, I found a bug. It, it's actually not a bug. <laughs> and Jem's doing it right, and somebody's been doing it wrong for 15, 20 years. So it's, it's really interesting like that. Um, but yeah, so I don't often stream as I play, so I apologize if I'm missing some stuff. Um, I'm probably not going to be my sharpest game, but there is some downtime. So again, every action is a pass. You keep going back and forth. You can also, and this is mentioned in the guide, um, oh, and I forgot, how could I forget Thor Skywalker was Endor, I was thinking later. So yeah, he, he can trade Leia and come and fight me with Luke, duh, I should know that. So if you hover over, see how the auto pass just goes down? This is a setting here, auto pass during opponent's turn, three seconds, I can make that higher, I can make that lower, um, I can turn it off so that I always have to hit pass. Um, if you have this on your like iPad, it's just always going to automatically go down. Whereas on desktop, you kind of have the option. You can obviously click, or if you hover, it automatically goes down. Or if you want to speed it up, you can just click manually. Right, 
he's got Leia out. Looks like Yoda's not coming out. Um, he's able to deploy Leia there because my own Yoda learned allows it to retarget her, or her text allows it. So there's no Yoda. So that's one less icon he's going to get. And now what's going to happen here? So I need to, the one, the one downfall of me putting Vader to this planet site, and this is what comes with playing games, like you get very familiar over time. You know, a card like Lost in the Wilderness, he could play here. And he could make my Vader go missing. I'm just going to take that gamble. Alright, so he put out Honor of the Jedi, which is really good for him. Um, because it's preventing him from losing Force and Visage. No Escape is not in this format. It comes out a little later, so that really helps him. So I'm going to click Force Drain. You know, it's my control phase, it lights up, saying, hey, you want to Force Drain? I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. It's really hard to forget to Force Drain on, on Gem. It's really hard because it's, you know... It's letting up unless you're just kind of focused on something else and you're just in like quick pass mode um, you won't usually miss it so he's gonna lose he already lost landing college in first turn visage he's gonna lose altar from reserve all right so now I'm going to hit pass on another action that I want to do during my control phase. Deploy phase, let me get out another docking bay. Death Star 1's in there. I can see what else is in here. Um, I know that I have one of my vehicles. I have two vehicles in the deck and only one's my reserve. So I can draw to get the other one if I want. Um, I have a ship in hand. Maybe I'll just deploy the ship, honestly. But the, I'm going to put Ozzel on it. Problem is if he attacks me. But let's take that risk. We'll do that. So I got another site out. He's going to take a Jedi test with his. And again, so like anything you can do is just like lit up. And it's basically like, do you want to do it? And if you want to do anything, you can just say that. So we're going to put the Executor here. Executor, however you pronounce it. We're going to put Ozzel on it for free. And you know, that's 12 force to basically put through one more drain through. But um, might not always be the best play. Maybe it probably would have been better in most cases just to draw there and get more cards in my hand. But... We're not um, going crazy here. And actually, I probably should have transferred. You could shift click, um, and that'll make things bigger. You could even rotate like that if you want. Just keep shift click. Sh shift click. Now I'll draw. Every every card you draw has gives you opponent response. So I drew two, and nothing too too hot there. So it's now it's just again going back and forth. He's not losing anything. Um, it will be good to go to a third battleground so I can get those visit trains through. But probably at that point. He's going to be able to maybe come fight me, but we'll see. So he activates, I say yes. That whole thing is prompting you in case I want to do something after he activates one, after he activates five. Um, it allows you to do it. So now he wants to find an effect. So he's going to play the signal. You know, if you were playing, if I had, there will be hell to pay in my hand, and I had a Preston Enforcement Arrow, which allows it to deploy for free, you know, it would light up in my hand. You'd be like, hey, do you want to grab it? And I'd be like, yeah, sure. Or you can be like, yeah, you know what, there might be something else I want to grab. Um, I personally would have done that because I got a sense that he had Yoda at the bottom of his reserve and now he shuffled it and now there's a chance he activated it and can mess with Yoda again. Unless he has Yoda to sand, which clearly he does, so that's good. Yoda's in the backpack. <clears throat> so honestly, this might be a really long game. And, you know, I don't want this to be too, too long of a stream, but... <coughs> Excuse me. Hey, sorry about that. I had to drive through. <clears throat> okay. Just from talking so much. This is where it would be good to have a co-commentator. <laughs> <clears throat> All 
All right, so he deploys Jedi Test 1. And he's going to be ready to pass that probably next turn. <clears throat> I think I haven't played Mount you'll learn too much, but I know it's like an optional <clears throat> to add to your Dragon Destiny for each of your sites that are out. <clears throat> so jump prompts for that too, so it's not like you have to forget, or you wouldn't forget. He's going to project on my site, <clears throat> which will definitely prompt me to move to the Death Star docking bay, because um, not only does not, that not have projection of Skywalker, but he can't put it there because it's a movable site. He could only put it on planet sites. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he draws. He's, he's getting ready to complete his test, which would eliminate Vader's uh, the Force Train bonus for Vader's lightsaber. And I think what I'm going to do here is. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I'll get my four strains through. Then I'm gonna run away with Vader. I'll probably put Veers to this platform. So then I'm on three battlegrounds, and worst case scenario, he comes and attacks me, and I have a gig. Um, so I'll four strain here. You know, I just realized that I don't even have my camera on, so I'll put that on. But um, just so you guys can see, if there's any body language, maybe it'd be helpful. But. Um, so one moment, as he's losing to his poor strain. Okay, there we go. So there I am, really big. Shrink me down, looking in the corner here. All right. <clears throat> so I could, so it's prompting me to retrieve if I want. I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to deploy <clears throat> the platform. And you know what, I could put Veers here. And then shuttle down. I don't want to do that. That'd be bad. But I really want to make it start losing to Visage. So let's see. I don't think I have any more docking bays, but let's do it just to check. All right. So now he gets to verify. So he will get now get to see my entire reserve deck. He now knows I have limited resources, and it's worse. Um, so <clears throat> he could play around those. So I've got Veers out. <clears throat> I really need some cards in my hand here because I don't have any, any little fighting forces. So I'm going to Docking Bay, Transit, Vader to get away from there. Now he's going to be losing to um, Message of the Emperor. He won't be satisfying. I've got another Force Lightning, which is not something I need. Um, and I'm just going to try to you know, multitask in terms of playing and also obviously showing off functionality because that's the main, main reason I'm doing this stream. Um, all right, so I have a monarch, get some, you know, starships and vehicles. And I got Emperor, that's really good, especially because I have these two Force Lightnings. Another Vader Saber might be a good thing to toss. Maybe I should have put UR Beat in here since I got three lightsabers. Oh, Mara, that's good too. All right, I'll draw one more. Stay at 12. Uh, okay, that's good. Um, so now I'll pass the turn. So he hit pass, it was his turn. Um, now he's losing automatic action. Automatic actions automatically enforced, which are good. So you don't have to, like, you, you'll learn which things. You quickly learn which things say May and which things just say lose one force. Um, because if they have a May, it's going to light up and you know require you to to take some action. So now it's his turn. He's got to decide. Maybe this will speed the game up. We'll both that 30 life force. Now the cool thing about jump, you constantly know how many force are in his hand. You don't have to ask your opponent how many cards are in your hand. You know how many force are you know down, how much he's activating, how much he's going to activate up here. In the top left, on the settings, all this stuff, all these different buttons and screens are all explained in the guide. Um, you know, players, it talks about sometimes you get some spectators in here. Uh, options, you don't want to click and see by accident. You can press game timer. Yeah, um, there, there's just, you know, all this type of stuff is stuff that you would be able to uh, get more detail on in that operational guide. That again, I, I said at the beginning, you definitely want to, that's your friend here. Um, but yeah, just seeing some of this stuff live. And in action um, is good. So he passes his test, which means Vader's lightsaber will now no longer apply a force drain. If you can click on this, I can see all right, I have a force drain for one, but the adding to the drain is optional and it's a bonus. So I can click on doing it on my turn 
but I don't want to do anything because Jedi Test 1 is on the table and all opponents for shooting bonuses are canceled. Let's see what his point of action is. So I imagine he probably got like a, a Luke with lightsaber, an Obi-Wan with lightsaber. He has to have some pieces to come and attack me. Um, you can't just turn one dig about. Oh, I realize some cards, some key cards I'm missing, and all secret plans in here. I don't come here, he'd be a coward. He could force turn there right now. Oh no, he can't because the objective I think prevents it. Yeah, your cards today, but may not force turn or contribute to force retrieval. I was gonna say, because I have an icon here. I don't have coming here to be coward out. So he's taking his action. He gets another sight out. Again, I can't stress it enough that you know stuff that you're able to do is always available to do. Um, and and like, I really do think the gameplay aspect is more intuitive and easy to kind of figure out um, than the other aspects of jump, like how to join a league or what do you do with the gold and all. Again, stuff that's all in the guide. But uh, you know, what, what are these my cards? How do I join a sealed league? How do I play in a sealed league? All that stuff's in there, but the, and especially because if it's not intuitive, it's even more so a reason why it was put in there so that people can reference it. But just to know kind of capabilities and you know, let's give a plug here that you can you can play in any format. You can play Premiere to Endor, you can play Premiere to Special Edition. As long as you have other people to play with, and sometimes you can post a table. If you're looking for like Premiere to Cloud City, it might be hard to get another taker just because it's not a format that a lot of people enjoy. But it, it's available and you can play you know, uh, I think the terminology still uses classic, which is original trilogy only. You could play no shield. You could play no V card. You could do whatever you want. It's all free and it's all you have access to every card ever printed. Really, you know, image wise, you know, not all the AIs are in here. And, and, um, yeah, there's no white border cards yet. Um, but in terms of functionality, every pretty much every card is in here except for those hundred that they're still working on. And, um, I, I heard some rumors from somebody that tractor beams are going to be implemented soon. And they were considered something that would be, it's always been considered something that's extremely hard to code. Uh, but they might be here sooner than later. So get excited for that, because I know a lot of people like tractor beams. Um, I don't know, which, so, he's, so sometimes you're playing against somebody, they're not the fastest player. Um, they're, they're deciding, you know, whatever, that's their right. Um, there are some timer parameters, like if you go five minutes without making a move, They'll time out your opponent will your win. Um, if the timer goes down to zero, <laughs> you lose. Um, this like chess clock that we have here, which is not like real life where you have like a shared clock. You know, there's like an hour or an hour fifteen for a game. Once you hit time, you know, someone has to get to finish up the turn with the person who went second. Then you do some differential. This if you time out, you lose, period. Um, casual games have sixty minute timers, you know, more competitive games are forty five or fifty. Sometimes there are leagues that are 30, 35. They're called blitz leagues. Those are kind of cool. Um, people just play faster. If you're trying to get a quick game in, you, hey, you got 30 minutes. You don't really have an hour. You know, worst case scenario, you join a game. You got to run. Something comes up. You can always, you know, say, hey, gotta go, good seed. But you shouldn't ever expect somebody to say, hey, all right, let's cancel the game on turn seven because someone had to go. Like, that's that's when whoever has to leave, they should be conceding. Because worst case scenario, the other person just sit there and be like, you know, sorry. Because with the whole thing I was saying earlier about tracking your decks and how they perform, you know, I, like personally, I, I don't, you know, there's always going to be some of that. There's always going to be a case for someone you're playing against somebody, hey, I forgot my starting effect. They concede. It's like, oh, great. Well, now that I got to win, but that might be a little bit misleading on how this deck is performing. So you play enough reps, those kind of odd, those one off situations, you can kind of trim them out when you're evaluating what decks are doing well. Um, but, but in general, if that happens all the time, you're going to be like, well, wait a minute, I don't feel like I did that well at this deck. And it's like, oh wait, cause I had a bunch of times against this guy who just conceded super early or, um, you know, didn't really play out the game at all. But you know, if someone wants to concede, that's fine. It's just a matter of kind of adjusting forward in your head if, if you, when you're evaluating. All right. So he comes down with Luke and red five with R2, Lando and Falcon. That's pretty decent force. Um, he can't battle. A lot of people forget this. Um, 
And when Hunt Down Slip, opponent can't initiate battles before streams where opponent has a Skywalker or a Jedi. Um, you know, this is something that's probably one of the most forgotten game texts. I know there's a person in the community that thinks this is really stupid. I think this is really thematic. <laughs> Because if the Jedi are hiding, or are gone, or Skywalkers are in hiding or gone, they shouldn't be able to initiate battles. Because then, um, you know, they would know. So this is actually a huge break for me, because now I'm going to have some time to put down Chimera. He only gets one battle destiny here. I think he... Oh, she has land speed 2, I believe. So you can click, yeah, land speed 2, because of the way of things. So even if I was able to move... I forget how this works, but you can move it around. Um, maybe because I passed, maybe it was lit up, I just didn't notice. Um, so now he draws, and now he's going to lose to Force Strain, um, or at least to Visage of the Emperor. And bottom line is that I might be able to kind of take control of this game pretty quickly. Um, I'm activating a lot of Force because of mobilization points. I'm probably going to put Emperor down. I mean, I have Mars Saber isn't doing me any good for a four strain bonus, but. Oops. That's what happens sometimes. I auto passed. I hit pass twice. Let's see if he lets me. We can see the revert function. Let's see if he lets me go back. He doesn't have to do it. It's a casual game, though. Usually people are pretty good about it. Um, yeah, so he's good. Thank you. Usually when people allow you over, you say thank you. Is so, I'm not, so I could add, but it's not going to do anything. But I'll do it just in case, just to see it. So he only has one force range, uh, one force he owes me, because the bonuses are canceled, Jedi test one. So he's got stone pile, I'm going to have force strain here with general fears. I'd really like if I get that, I think that Admiral's order makes me immune a little bit. Yeah, the one I put in. So I definitely want to put Chimera up here to reinforce my Executor. Now I'm 22. He only gets one battle destiny, but if he has like... Let's put this down so I can deploy my grabbers for free. I'm going to put the Emperor... Yeah, let's put him up here for like fodder. Can I put him as fodder? Yeah, I got two others floating around. Worst case scenario, I lose him. Both my activation a lot. I don't think I need to. I may not even battle here, to be honest. Can this hold vehicles? Yeah, let's do that. Uh, then I can't bat then I can't battle. Let's let's put Mara up here. And then let's battle. Um Yeah, just just to try to overpower him, force him to lose something. My docking bays out. Alright, well, let's initiate battle here. I got one force left. I'm probably forgetting something here. This might go bad. Oh, no, no, no. Good reason I put <laughs> good reason I put Emperor up there, because I can add in space if I have you now. So now I'm gonna get three battle destiny. Because of Dark Jedi with Luke. So Luke is a huge liability here, so you can't even forge drain me because of my objective. Now he just allowed me to get two extra battle destiny. They're probably going to be low because in this era, destinies were usually lower. Nowadays, you have cards like Jedi Levitation, Virtual, and Sith Fury Virtual, and cards just have generally destiny creeped. Um, so here we go. One. I mean, I have five Vaders in the deck. I have lots of ones. Okay, this is actually really good. So now that's E, which means he has to lose two things out of three. Uh, so it's probably going to be Luke and R2, which then I'll allow him to battle, but I'm not really too afraid of him coming back at me. Like I could, I might, who do I lose here? I have to lose Vader, or uh, Amara, or Emperor. I'm gonna lose Emperor again. Or, uh, I'm gonna lose Emperor. He's not adding any power. I don't have an I have you now in my hand. I'm not gonna have another. Um, so, He's going to need to lose two guys, so probably the R2, unless he's got another Luke in hand that he can throw right back on it. Yeah, he says R1, not one less. 
Yeah, that's how it goes a lot of the times. You're like you're just hoping your opponent draws one less and they've got just enough to to knock you off. So I think my yeah, my transit from here is free of Imperial Present. I think I'd rather Yeah, I think I'd rather even though I'm not gonna be able to drain now, at least I can then shuttle beers up. Um Oh, this one's bad. He doesn't even have any to starships. I should remember that. The, new, the Channel Gears virtual is really good. He's in a lot of like Imperial decks, like Imperial uh, Entanglements and Bouncer Operations. Um, the Veers virtual is pretty good in Hoth, uh, Hoth decks, Hoth Walker decks. He's got some pretty cool stuff that he does. But so he's kind of in a pickle here. Unless he's got some good cards in his hand, I'm going to be able to really take control of this game. Um, and we are at 53 minutes, so you know, I was trying to keep this to an hour, so I, it looks like if we did do a light side, well, well I'll do more streams of these. I, I'm just kind of hoping that this accompanies, again, the guide to help people and see that, you know, maybe a lot of people think this is more intimidating or more difficult than it is. Um, you know, a lot of times people say, hey, I don't wanna, I'm afraid to play, I, I don't want to, you know, play really slow, or I don't want to make a lot of dumb things and feel stupid. And that's not it. There's a lot of really nice people in the community. The one thing you just want to do is, if you're posting a casual table, just be like, type new to jump, which we'll toggle here. Like, if you're posting a game, there's this description. Just write, like, new to jump, first time on game, you know, please be patient, stuff like that. Now, you're not going to have somebody who's looking for a quick competitive game then. Um, and you only get better by playing. And I, I think I saw Casey post it on Facebook, like, you kind of don't want to play against the bot to get better or more comfortable because then you're just, the bot doesn't, he needs a lot more refinement still. Rando Cal is the bot, you'll see him. AI, he's got a long way to go. It's really neat that he's even here right now, but I would recommend almost playing against yourself with two accounts or finding a friend or even just like posting and just say, hey, no, please be patient. And just, just got to not feel bad about this. You're going to make a million mistakes. You know, I, I started playing again about four years ago i played a lot of games on Jump. I've made a lot of mistakes. I make the same mistakes a lot of... Same, same mistakes many times over. Um, it's a really tough, complicated game, but it's really rewarding when things go right. So that's my suggestion is just don't get too far down. Don't let records. Don't get discouraged. You know, there's just so many variables that it's hard to really assess, hey, am I comfortable with this deck or am I not? Is this deck good? Does it need a lot of changes? It's tough to make those decisions unless you get a lot of reps in, you know, and get some decent sample sizes. And luckily, you know, Jump's there 24-7 and you just got to... You can find somebody to play with. You can just keep keep playing, keep getting better, keep refining your skills, refine your deck selection choices or your card selection choices in your decks, um, and eventually you'll, you'll get better and better. So now he's got to test four. So this is interesting. And like I said, I, I built this deck as you guys saw. And I did not put coming big coward or secret plans in here. So if he gets to five, he's going to flip retrieve ten, and that's going to be a problem. So I need to get some more damage through sooner rather than later. Because once he gets that 10 back, okay, so he's got some good dust. He's got a neighbor in, get to the mentor, Jedi loop. You know, that's a huge value, just from a playing perspective, not necessarily a game functionality perspective. You know, verifying your opponent's reserve deck is always really important. It's information. Information is power. And, you know, stuff's in there. It's not obviously in his hand. And it doesn't mean he's not playing multiples. He might have two Jedi loops in his hand, for all we know. But, but a lot of times, you know, cards like you see a Hujix in the reserve deck, you're like, oh, wow, okay, maybe I can gamble now this turn. Go for a big battle. Bet that he doesn't have any life vest, and you can like win the game that way. But a lot of times, you want to be a little hesitant to, you know, commit to a lot of resources, and then just have them hoojicks it. And you're like, okay, you definitely overdeployed, overdeployed, and that that can be a, you know, it's a misplay. It hurts. So he's got Han. He's gonna come down. So so this means to me is that he has no other characters in his hand. He has nine force active. He's only he has three cards in his hand, but he didn't put anybody to support Han with. Um, so that's interesting. So. This is going to work out pretty well in that I'm not even going to take. I'm going to take one card of overflow here. I don't have to burn my gick. Um, he is ninth four, so he's going to be an interesting spot of. Uh, let's see. I'll do this. We got to lose one more card. So this will prompt you to play gick. A lot of times, if you play gick by accident or you try to lose it. If you go to lose it, um, there's some stock gaps to make sure that you're not losing Gick instead of playing it. Let me put it that way. So 
So I'm going to lose one extra card in battle damage, which is another I have you now. And now he's just got Han there, so I don't know if he's got like a Ripple Barrier, or he's just hoping I don't have any things to come back at him with, but I'm definitely going to at least deploy Tempest 1 there. Just do a battle. Win by two. He's got to lose some. He's got to lose two fours. And uh, maybe I'll put Mara down then. To the docking bay. And really start trying to get more damage. Through. Although Mar Mara is the four strip is zero. Or for, yeah, for me. Um, let's see. So, so again, so I, I did this kind of ad hoc. I didn't really schedule this. So unfortunately, that means that I probably don't have like many viewers who can kind of engage and interact and ask questions if they need to. Um, but again, hopefully, this is something that we can post, have people look at, leverage, learn stuff from, um, and use going forward. So again, so this is, I'm Jared. Uh, I'm on the marketing team. I do. Bunch of different stuff to try to promote the game, and get it in a better, better, keep moving it forward put it that way. Um, so this will go on the this will go on the official PC YouTube channel, so people can watch. Um, and like I said, now that it was pretty embarrassing. I think the the last jump video tutorial video was really outdated. And actually, I haven't even watched it. I wonder. Um, to do this real quick, we hit back. If we hit this, so you can do all this as the game is playing. The game won't go away. I just want to look just curious on what this video tutorial is and does. So I can go back and forth and just hit pass. Yeah, so it's like nine, these are really old. 9, 16 minutes, 22 basic. Yeah, th these aren't good. <laughs> so these were 2016. And I'll tell you that Jump has hit another level. And, and in the in the guide post, it'll point you to some data. Um, Jump really hit a new level in like early 17. That's when a lot of the virtual parts started getting programmed in. That's when Troy, um, the original developer, really, uh, it seemed like he picked up Steam and really started coding a lot of cards. So just got made, made, way more popular. You know, there's more Star Wars content out there. People are coming back to the game. They got more suggestions on what they want to see. And then this year, you know, unfortunate reasons with the pandemic, people locked in their homes and not able to go out as much as they used to. Played a lot of Star Wars CCG on Gem. Um, over 67,000 games were played. We had four online majors, um, so in that sense, it was good that these people can play and take their mind off some crazy stuff going on in the world. Um, but um, point being is that a lot has changed since those videos were made. So I'm hoping that this video and a couple others will go a long way towards helping people see that uh, this is a really neat tool. You know, you'll have some people that will complain, "Oh, it's not real Star Wars or Star Wars ECG. So yeah, it's different. It's absolutely a different game because in real life stuff doesn't light up and prompt you. So then the biggest thing you'll see is a lot of times really good players <laughs> will be like, eh, I don't like Jump, or you know, it, it, it's it's not great. And the and the thing is with with Jump is that it doesn't make good players worse. It just really levels out the playing field because you it makes the learning curve not quite as hard because again you can only do what it allows you to do. Um, you still have to make decisions, and that's where people get. You know, where the skill separates people, but like it's everything. The skill level is much more constricted on here because you don't have to quite remember many things. Um, so it definitely means that a a worse a worse player will beat a really good player more often on jump than they will in real life. So it introduces some randomness. Again, another reason why not to be too um, discouraged. You know, you'll, you'll gradually start beating some good players. The more you play, the more comfortable you get. All right, so I'm going to attack here after I just do my force drain. Um, he has this landed vehicle here, which unless he's got some trick up his sleeve, I don't see him doing too well with. I'm not going to deploy the saber, even though I'm going to probably deploy. Yeah, let's do it. We're just going to stress every single decision here. Probably better she has the saber if I shovel her down. Um, so yeah, so it's good that, let's see what's in the reserve deck. We'll have a, a more updated. Actually, my destiny isn't too bad. I only have two ones in here. Not that I'm drawing, but so I'm just going to see battle here. He doesn't get battle destiny because passengers or uh, landed starfighters. They're they don't apply. Their pilots don't apply ability towards battle destiny. You know, that's what the you know, stuff like that's in the advanced rulebook. Which you can go to StarWarsCCG.org, click on the rules tab, look at the AR 3.0. It might scare some people, but you know, I sat down a couple years ago and just you know, let me take an hour to read this. 
And you're just reading through it and you're like, oh wow, it just gives structure to a lot of stuff that you might remember from when you used to play, or maybe some of your um, predispositions from other games. Um, but it's like the right way to play, the right way things work. And I think they're going to be I think they're going to be dropping a new version soon, too. I don't think it's going to be called 4.0, I heard. It'll have a little different name. And that'll be really neat that there'll be yet another updated one, kind of like a post-jump world, because I think this one was made in 2016. They have, like, an addendum forum thread where they kind of add stuff as they find it out. Um, but uh, that, that that's a great, great document. It's really dense. So, you, But there's a lot in there that's, like, more glossary-type stuff or very specific ruling stuff. So when you see, I think it's like 130, 140 pages, like it's not really intended to read cover to cover. The early sections, like the basics and how to go through phases, that stuff's helpful, but that's not nearly um, the majority of the, the, the guide. All right, so I'm gonna draw a few cards here. He's down to 15 lines forced. He's only at, maybe he completes Jedi Test 4 this turn. Maybe he gets 10 back. By the time he is able to retrieve force, um, with flipping, he retreats and force by flipping. Um, he, he's going to need a little comeback. Let's see. So what other stuff makes sense? Well, I didn't realize those tutorials were that old. Um, I knew they were old and not really practical, but... Um, so here's some unlocked out still, so... In the back of the lobby. I'm kind of alternating back and forth. See, there's this auto pop-up thing with the new game. Go back in the game here. You can go in and out of lobby if you need to for some reason. If you like, wait. Sometimes if you're in a competitive game, the chat doesn't work, so you can't like talk to a spectator and be like, "What's the deal here?" You might want to go back into the chat, so you can do that back and forth and not worry about your game like failing. The game will only end if the timer passes out, or you hit concede, or somebody's life force is depleted. Um, yeah, so this is our dark side deck. We'll, we'll do the prop that I'll, probably, I'll do that as another another stream. Um, you know, if people watch this, please, I should put this in the. I'll put this in the description. Like, if you watch this and have questions, feel free to respond on Twitch or or YouTube in the comments or or whatever. If you have any questions and stuff you want to see in the future, things or things that you're confused about or whatever, I, I, I want to make this adaptable and make it helpful to people. So your input is is really good. Um, that's what I'm looking for. I don't want to just go off my script and off my spiel and just kind of how naturally how I think this is going to be best uh, executed here. So he's going to deploy stone pile and steal my invader. And I already forgot who that was. Looked away for a second. I think there might be a shield for this. And nowadays, card return is effectively stable. So. It's a weird site, <laughs> a weird card. So you basically just spent two force and uh, burned a card to take two of my force. All right, so now he's got Jedi Test 5, and I unfortunately don't really have any things to come and fight uh, Han here with to try to overflow him. He might even have a, oh boy, oh, this is going to get bad. Yeah, this is why you need secret plans. And why you need come here to coward in every premier dust or two deck. So we're learning a lesson here. Um, so if you if you build a deck, it's nice gonna retrieve a bunch. Um, I think it's the end of his next turns when he completes Jedi Test 5 is how that works. Ooh. Oh, 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 so that was a misplay. So if you used Daughter of Skywalker, you can't your cards on day one may not contribute to force retrieval. That's probably a reason why they put that in so people can just on the edge with their Luke or Leia. I would normally be like, yeah, let's revert, but I'm sure. <laughs> we probably, I probably will too if you ask. Um, I just, uh, this will just draw the game out. And I was kind of hoping that we can have a clean cut off and that I don't have to just concede because it's getting a little too, uh, too overwhelming or too long of a game. I mean, if he has a Hujix in his hand, I mean, this is just going to be a turtle game because he's, yeah, yes. So he could target Han if he wanted. Um, so he has to revert. Um, in competitive games, you know, the bar is usually a lot higher for reverts. Depends. There's, there's, you know, I mean, much, I, I think I put the word consternation in the guide. 
you know, usually when like cards are revealed, I mean, he obviously knew that Jedi Luke was on top of his reserve deck or else he wouldn't have played that. Or at least I'm thinking he did. Um, but usually if like destinies are revealed or cards are drawn or like once you kind of take the genie out of the bottle on certain things, or some things are like taking the genie out of the bottle and put it that way, you can't put it back in. Um, those are good reasons to deny a revert. If it's a straight up misplay, which happens a lot, like that, that's a misplay in a, in a competitive event. Someone could revert that or deny that revert, and I would have no. I think most people would be like, "Yeah, it's fine. You, you messed up. <laughs> Sorry, that's how the game works." In real life, it would happen a lot too. Um, so this is interesting. He's now going to fight me. He knew the six was there again. I'm kind of hoping he didn't know that because this would be kind of iffy if if he didn't know that. But I'd rather him do this than play on the edge, to be honest. Because <laughs> he could have just played on the edge on Han. I don't know why he didn't. It's a rebel ability greater than two. Um, I don't know what he was going for. So, all right, so I drew a four. He reduced it. All right, so I'm still going to hit Han. And now Han's going to have no forfeit. And he's not getting Destiny. And this thing covers six. So he's going to be staring at overflow equal to my Destiny. And you know what? Maybe I'll. I'm going to play Imperial Command. I'm going to try and grab Grand Admiral Thrawn. Or maybe even pick it. I don't know. Thrawn must be in money. Thrawn must. You can move this to. Uh, let's get pick it. Sure, you're not going to do anything since you completed Jedi Test 1. Another cool thing, and this was something I didn't realize when I first drafted the policy, you can move your cards around too in your hand. It's pretty, if you want to kind of, like, I know in real life I do this a lot where I'll put the characters together. If I'm about to battle, I want all my battle interrupts like, towards the top so I don't forget to play them. Um, so I draw three. He can subtract one with Jedi Test 3. So he's going to take two overflow, but now he has zero board presence. And I'm going to drain him for one, one. He's going to lose to Visage. Um, he's going to kill Mara, but now I can just put Mara right back out. So, um, maybe I'll put Piet to pilot this. Now, you know what I'll do? I'll just going to cover the battleground so he doesn't have a place to put his guys. So, unless he's got some tricks, a lot of times in this type of situation, your opponent will concede that they put, I can keep playing this out. Maybe I reduce the differential, but most games on jump are. You, know, you win or you lose. It's rare that you're playing in an event where differential matters. And that's where when trying to judge or gauge you know, how good is this deck, might be beating people by a lot, or beating people by a little. You, know, you might have to track that offline because GIMP yeah, doesn't track you know, differential. And it, even if it did, when people when people just outright concede, which is totally again they're right, um, you know, they might concede with 40 cards left in the life force. Like, what do you do for that? Alright, so now it's my turn. I'm going to activate. I'm sure I'll try to speed up here. Force train. Uh, let's see what other stuff makes sense to talk about. So, you know, obviously in the later format, you're going to have shield, defensive shield, starting effects. They'll all be along here. You can also move this stuff, which I also didn't realize until recently. If for any reason you want your effects in a little bit of a different order, you can do that as well. Uh, we talked about shift clicking. These are out of play up here, so if any cards are out of play, you can just click here and you can see it. Again, this is, I'm on a Mac. Um, I'm on a Mac desktop. Um, you can play this on tablet. I play a lot of games on iPad. Um, it's pretty good. There's the one drawback is sometimes some of the cards. When you're clicking on things, sometimes you like accidentally double click. So you'll click on something. Let me give you an example. Um, like this. Like if you click on. Yeah, so Piet, I could do two things. Sometimes if you click on an iPad, you'll double click, and you might go to take a card in your hand when you don't want to do that. Um, so let's verify our reserve deck. Let's see if there's anything. There's a decent destiny for this, lots of threes and fours. Um, I think actually I will now cycle Masterful Move. I got that with six in my deck, then have it in my hand when I already have the two Dejarics that I would pull in my hand and kick in Monarch. Um, so I'll cycle that. I have Mar. This is, so now I'm on four battlegrounds. He has nowhere to go. Um, and I think I'm just going to draw. I actually don't want to pull that Admiral's Order into my hand right now, I don't think, because I don't think I'd rather have a six floating than the potential benefits of it.
Let's deploy another visage. Maybe I'll put Emperor at the Hollow Theater to guard it so he doesn't have a spy. Then you can just throw it down and cancel it, because that's, you know, I'm causing as much damage with visage every cycle, which is my turn, his turn is a cycle, um, than I am with these four strings. But now I'm going to get one more drain through each turn. So he's at nine, three in hand. And let's see, any other functionality? So again, so we'll come back and, and, build, and finish building this next time. Um, Again, so I just want to stress, if you guys, as you're watching this, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, let me know, and I can incorporate that for future ones, or I can just answer your questions if you have pretty direct things. Don't don't hesitate. Um, so he's going to turn Daughter of Skywalker upside down. So this is cool, too. I know that this came up with, like, worlds. So we just had our 25th worlds. It was all online. From a commentary perspective... And there's benefits to jump because instead of like a live event where you're on camera and you're, oh, what's that guard say? Or there's glare, I can't see what that is from the light. You know, now if the commentator, if the audience is like, what card is there? What does that card do? You can just shift click on stuff and you know exactly what they do, you know exactly what card it is. Um, you know, if it's forfeit's been reduced, all this information here, like during a battle, is really helpful. Automatic modifiers, hey, your force generations um, bumped up because of mobilization points. Um, all this stuff is at anyone's fingertips, and if, if, you, if you're a, a spectator or a commentator, you could do it as well. Here, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's make Charlie Advisor to cycle a card, and we'll, you know, we'll grab that. That'll be, that'll be good. That might be our best defense against on the edge right now, honestly. Um, or else you could just keep getting it back. So, you know, if I play this deck again, I'll definitely put a secret plans in to make him pay for his. Retrieval, or I'd put Come Here You're a Coward in so that he has to be on two battle rounds in order to get retrieval. Um, and he's really dwindling now, too. Um, so I'm not going to activate everything because I don't know if I'm going to be using everything that I want to have. No cards in my reserve deck. Should I need them? Uh, Alright, so let's just force train. He's going to get forced back. When does this work? So, so again, I was just talking about this. So deploy on a deck of a site. At the end of your next turn, turn it, put his right side up, so that's when he's going to flip. But, I mean, I don't know what that's really going to do for him. Because um, he'll have more force, but he's going to need a bunch to be able to do something. So yeah, one of the best things he could do right now is put a spy here. So that's why I'm going to put Emperor there. I got a four string here. That's a zero. That's a zero four string, as you can see. Um, let me just put the emperor there to guard it. If this was like a differential game, I'd probably be cautious not to just draw cards just for the sake of drawing. But either I'm going to win this or I'm going to lose this. I'm not going to. You want to win by a certain amount. All right. So I'll just do that. I'm just going to pass the turn to him. Motivator that I don't really need. Crush. Could look at that. I could cycle that if I need to. Force field in case he has a weapon. So, yeah, so he's only seven force. He's now down to seven life force, including his hand. Um, let's see. I think that's about it. Um, I think maybe, so not only will I do a light side version in this format, maybe I'll do other formats in the future. Definitely will want to do some open stuff so you guys can see how shields work. Um, and, you know, stuff like Java's Prize, any, any kind of really interesting um, mechanics that are in, you know, the, the current competitive game that aren't, you're not going to see here. Um, oh, so you have another projection. There's actually a new card that came out. Um, a shield in the latest set, virtual set 13, it's a defensive shield that makes it so if your opponent is playing my what you have learned, I think projection of Skywalker's straight up cancelled. Because this is one of the things that my what you have learned makes it kind of a I should say kind of makes it a negative playing experience where they're just turtling your own dig about doing their thing, they're reducing your drains, they're not interacting with you oftentimes. Um, so it makes for a game that just kind of gets dragged out and uh so, so if I have secret plans here, like you can't retrieve anything, but now he's gonna be able to get ten back. Um, um, 
he's gonna draw. I mean, the only thing I could think of, <laughs> I mean, there's, I'd be really shocked if he has a path to victory here. Maybe he retrieves 10, maybe he has a Luke, shows a Luke down. I mean, like, his best case scenario is he, I don't even know. <laughs> is he, I have, he, he has to know I have 12 part hand. I have more Vader, so he, he's not gonna, like, eliminate Vader. Um, so he could stick, oh, he's gonna die. <laughs> He's gonna put the two on there and his life force is gonna be depleted. Oh no, he only picks one. Okay, whew. That's right, I was thinking he puts two. I don't know why. I mean, I'm thinking of Yoda Virtual who draws two. So that's wild. He had one force left. They're walking a tightrope there. And this is just gonna get to the point where, like, he's gonna lose another handful of force from my damage. And then he's not gonna have the force to deploy anybody. I've actually played him in, in some open games. Um, I think I played him, man. I think he was using Hitco. I think he did pretty well. Um, I'm glad. Thank you for accepting Ryu. Um, or sure are you. I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. Um, but yeah, Premier Dust 2 is probably the third or fourth most popular format. Most popular is obviously open. Second is uh, probably the Java format, which is like a cut down from open. And then this is pretty popular. Premier Reflections 2. Um, and then every, the other stuff kind of varies month to month. Some months you'll see like a high premiere only. Um, you know, the sealed decks don't go into that breakdown on the server stats. So that's this, um, which is really cool. I like playing around with this uh, tab up here. Like you can do, or no, let's do 20, 2020. Nope, not 2020, 2020. So this will tell you everything for December of 2020. There were just 60, almost 6,300 games played. Um, let's see, here, I'm going to hold him up, we'll come back to that as he's at the end of his turn. Okay, so guess this stuff doesn't recirculate either. Um, there's, really, there's some other stuff like that. Um, and if you, can't really, you can't, if he picks up Daughter Skywalker, the test gets suspended, so then I get my drain back. That'd be bad for him. But yeah, 6,300, let me do the math real quick, I'll pull up my calculator, so, I mean, what is that, like over 200 games a day? Yeah, um, 6,298 divided by 31, 203 games a day that are played, over 500 active players, that might include some alt accounts, but probably not that many, because the main reason for alt accounts historically were because you can have private games, but that's a new function, that you can play a private game against somebody, you don't have to worry about anybody watching your game, watching your secret tech. Or some people out there are just nervous, they don't want people watching them and being like, oh wow, I saw that guy playing, did something bad. You know, if you're a beginner, you don't have to worry about that either, as long as you have somebody that you can play out of the game with. Alright, so I don't really have much else to do here. I might just, let's just do that. I'll just cycle our Imperial Command. Oh, cool, so it's 6, 2, or, um, I don't really know what his plan is, but I have a gig here, like worst case scenario. I might just draw a card, hopefully one that I can cycle, <laughs> and uh, pass the turn. It's a pass. A lot of times people will pass through two phases at once, and that's what will be a common revert. And that's usually one that doesn't cause any issues. People are usually like, yeah, okay, yeah, I have done that before myself, but not a big deal. Um, but yeah, so we have this. See, you'll see the total games are 6,300. If you sum up all these games, you won't get to 6,300. The difference in that is the league games. So anything, a league and playtesting, um, and the league games, all sealed games are these leagues. So those are, aren't going into that number. Um, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool that they keep track of all this. I Again, in, one, in the guide, it points to another forum post that breaks down kind of how game, how, how games have been played on Jeff over a really long period of time. Um, it's really mind blowing to be honest. Here's our stats. This is another cool thing. It'll break down after this game. We'll go in the casual bucket. It'll say hunt down, you know, one. Maybe we'll even do that real quick. Um, he's got a four in his deck, so you got him. Go back and forth. This the format rules will tell you what each format is. A lot of times people will type in the chat, "What is Java format?" And it's like, well, you just go to the format tab, rules tab, and you can see that it's X listed a bunch of cards. Um, so here on this Mac, you can see that if I'm on another tab and it's waiting for me, it'll say waiting for your decision. That's helpful. Um, you know, you can play open, 
open uh, format. Beggar's X listed on all these because Beggar crashes the server. It's a real glitchy card. Um, so they've just kind of said, hey, no one play this for a while until we can kind of figure it out. And if we ever figure it out. Um, so yeah, so this is the different formats. Um, leagues, we talked about game history. And your stats, those aren't anything until we actually play some games. Um, you know, we talked about gold. Server time is on Grand Mountain time. Or not Grand Mountain. Greenwich Mean Time. Um, and, uh, and uh, so that's usually five or six hours ahead of East Coast time. Game rules points to the AR tab. Um, and I think we talked about just about everything else. You'll see these other decks that are, or other, uh, not other decks, other games. Um, so he's going to play On the Edge. He's going to get, so he's going to get three back here too, which isn't even that great. Nowadays, On the Edge is kind of a tricky card because there's a virtual card, which isn't played as often now as it was like six months ago, but a dark time for the Rebellion virtual, and added one or subtract one. So if you ever play On the Edge, you need to expect, oh no, he's just going to substitute, duh. Um, I mean, if he plays a second On the Edge here, I'm just going to concede. I don't want to keep dragging this out. We're already at hour 23. Um, chosen number three. I wonder why, I mean, he must have realized that he could do that after he did it, or else he would have um, picked five, I think, unless he really wants to play somebody. But maybe we'll just give him, again, if this gets another, yeah, he's saying I could have five. I, I'm not worried about wins or losses on this test account. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping just to educate people on, on the system. So I, the last thing I want to do is somebody to see, oh, wow, this game, this is a two-hour tutorial. I don't want to watch that. And it's because the game kind of dragged out. So I will have a hard stop here in another couple of minutes. Um, and especially because I think we've talked about a lot of stuff so far. Um, again, another PSA. You, this guide is your friend, bookmark it, read it. Um, you, it, it it's, I especially did not use spoiler tags on that, so if you had a question about gold, you can just do control F gold. Um, and that's where I think it has value and kind of, oh wait, what, what does it say about leagues? Let me do control F for leagues. What do those do? Oh wow, he's going for, he's going for Jedi test six. Oh man. Target Skywalker, well, and they have a, we treat us to play phase. So you can pick up leg and then go fight me? Oh wow, attempt to remove phase invaders with target. Target until each player draws just the add ability, highest total wins of target. Test completed. I had one battle in every battle. Oh my gosh. Alright, so now this is like I feel really bad. So he's gonna pick up Leia, but now he can't deploy her anywhere. And all the tests I think are suspended, right? Um Luke's Jedi tests are suspended, not lost, whenever Luke is on, on table. And, okay, so here's one. I wonder if they all are going to. Is it one at a time? He probably is being prompted to pick which one's in what order. Because that'll happen a lot. Like with Monarch used. I don't know, I, that, I think it's random. There's certain cards that, like Harvest, you have to pick which order. Well, that, that, that one kind of makes sense, but... Um, but, yeah. So, so, all his tests are suspended, which means I'm going to get through an extra drain here. <clears throat> um, with Vader's lightsaber, since the force strength bonuses are not canceled. But that's right, these projects on Skywalker have saved him. How many force strength courses can? This is turn eight. You know, between the two of them, it's probably like at least six or seven. Um, in which case, he'd be, he'd be toast this turn. So even if. Yeah, so this is going to get silly, because now he's going to lose one. I'm going to drain him for one, two, three. He's going to lose one more to Visage, that's four. One, two, three, four, and that's gonna leave him with nine. That's not too bad, because then he can just throw it down Leia, substitute a six. Um, hmm. You know, he might actually be able to win this, to be honest. Oh, no, I take that back. It's not like my force is depleted. If he completes the test, they duel, they got your destiny, highest wins. Test completed, leave on table, add one. Yeah, that. Man, that should be almost like bringing before me or there's good in it where it's like an auto win condition. If you are able to complete Jedi Test 6, like, that's pretty crazy. That's because there's a lot that goes into that. All right, so he says GG, I messed it up. So I think, he, yeah, I, I think I'm going to win this, but it might just uh, take a while if he really wants to play that. Um, 
So you can see it and I had to pass, so thanks for the game. Alright, so thanks to my opponent, thanks for everyone for tuning in. Hopefully this is helpful. Again, feel free to leave questions. Probably gonna do some more of these. Um, use the guide. <laughs> and uh, and uh, good luck on Gem and hope to see a lot of folks, even more folks active this year than last year, because we got a lot of people come back to the game, come into the game. And hopefully uh, hopefully that trend continues because the game's in a good spot. Um, and hopefully a lot of the the value that has come out of this online gaming translates to people being active and better and more, real competitive events when the live events are allowed again, which I know we're all looking forward to because they're a great time. The community's a really, really good bunch of people. Um, and it's always a good time at majors and even locals, obviously, as well, are, are great. So tune in. Again, so this is Jared signing off. Uh, thanks to everyone who watches this and uh, looking forward to hearing some feedback. Thanks.